All right, big dogs, welcome back to the HQ. Your man's Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat. Fantasy football drafts are rapidly approaching, which means I need to tell you all which players to avoid. So we're updating this list. I haven't done this video in a long time. We're going to do one for the wide receivers, one for the running backs. Today is going to be the pass catchers, the wide receivers, and I'm going to list off three honorable mention in this list. So we're going to, we're going to talk about my top three wide receivers to avoid, top three guys who I think are going to be busts based on their current ADP. These aren't, uh, well, two of them aren't guys I'm necessarily staying away from, like I'm fading them at all costs. They're just, I, I would not draft them as high as their ADP is. They're the third guy is one guy I'm completely staying away from, probably regardless of where he falls in the drafts. But it's going to be a good one for you guys today. Before the video starts, I want you all to leave a comment down below. Who are some of the wide receivers you are avoiding and why? Por qué? Por qué? Because I like to hear y'all's opinions and sometimes you have analysis that changes the way I think. So I always appreciate that. As much as you're learning from me, hopefully I'm learning from you. So drop a comment down below. While you're down there, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up on the video um, because I put a lot of hard work into these bad boys and it lets me know that you appreciate them. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, this first one, before you hear the name, well, I'm already excited to kind of hear the, the kickback I'm gonna get on this one. I want you, before you turn the video off when you hear the name, I want you to listen to my argument against him. I truly believe that you're gonna see him in a different light, at least where he's being drafted right now. This is the wide receiver in Houston, DeAndre Hopkins. Right now, currently going off the board, pick eight or nine as wide receiver two behind only Antonio. Hear me out. So Hopkins is a guy that I am avoiding in the first round. You will not get him in the second round, of course. He is currently my 13th player overall. Uh, wide receiver four behind Brown, Odell, Julio, I believe as well, just moved above him. And then it's D-Hop. So I'm not going to get him in any of my teams because he's not going to be picked at 13th or 14th overall. Someone in your friends and family league will be picking him in the first round, probably the top eight. So a lot of what I say for DeAndre Hopkins is a reason I'm fading Deshaun Watson at his current like quarterback two 50th overall pick this year. So stay with me on this. Hopkins, I will preface it with saying he is an absolute monster, an elite talent in the NFL, great hands, uh, route running technician. He's got everything working for him. Hopkins is a monster. There's, there's nothing about me that says otherwise. But when you look back at the 2017 season he had in terms of statistics, it screams out regression to me. And that is for a few reasons, which I will lay out right now. First being this, he led the NFL with a 35% target market share on his team. So he saw 35% of the targets that happened in um, this Houston offense. The next closest player was Antonio Brown at 30%, a full 5% lower than DeAndre Hopkins's um, numbers. So I went back and I wanted to look at what does it mean for someone who either leads the NFL in target share or who has a uh, target share that high on a team? And these are some of the tweets that I tweeted out the other day. Highly recommend you follow me on the Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE. So DeAndre Hopkins, like I said, led NFL wide receivers with a 35% team target share. That was 5% higher than the next closest wide receiver. And it was the highest percentage of the last five NFL seasons. So over the last five years, no one has had a 35% target market share or higher. Um, and DeAndre Hopkins did that last year. So I look back at the previous five years, um, and obviously it had to be 2012 to 2016 because we don't know the 2018 number, so I can't see what happens in the next year. So I looked at that. I looked at those years plus N plus one. So that year plus one more year to see what happened in the next year. Brandon Marshall uh, had a 40% target share in 2012. And I also threw Wayne, Reggie Wayne into this because Marshall's 40% target share is really kind of an outlier. I use both of their percentages, but to make it even more realistic, to argue, um, to be more optimistic about DeAndre Hopkins, I also included Reggie Wayne in there at 31% because he was second. In 2013, Vincent Jackson and Quan Bolden led the NFL with a 31% target share. In 14, it was AB and DT at 30%, AB and Julio at 33% in 2015, Mike Evans at 30% in 2016. So I looked at those NFL leading target market shares and I looked at what happened in the in the following year. Antonio Brown in 2014, when he had a 30% target share, is the only player on this list to actually increase his target market share the following season. He went from 30 to 33, still below DeAndre Hopkins' 35. Every other wide receiver, every single one on that list between the, like, what is it, eight there or seven? No, it's actually nine there. Every other wide receiver on that list 
decrease their target market share. And on average, that decrease was by 4.4%. So if you took the average, DHOP is gonna go from 35% down to around 30.5%. And I'm not sure that's even going to happen. It might be even lower than that considering the other weapons they have on their team, which I'll get into in a minute. But if you have Hopkins, Hopkins is basically being drafted at what he did last year. Um, and I'm not sure that we're gonna see him have much higher target percentage than Julio Jones on his team or an Odell Beckham on his team, but we'll get into that again. So historically, the usage and the volume is a concern for Hopkins. And as good as Hopkins is at times, he's not exactly the most efficient. Like he makes these highlight tape plays, but I wanted to look back and be like, was last year more of a volume thing? Like, can we actually say with certainty that if his volume comes down, then his numbers will come down? So I want to look at efficiency numbers. And this is what I found. He was 24th in air yards last year, um, which is a predictive statistic, 16th among wide receivers in production premium per player profiler, 13th in target premium, which is still good, but it's not you know top five or top three numbers. He was 42nd in yards per target. He was 25th in contested catch rate, 43rd in QB rating when targeted, and 101st among NFL wide receivers in average separation per target. That's not, that's not great. Now, my argument definitely isn't to say that Hopkins is, is bad or last year was bad or his efficiency is bad or any by that means, right? So th this is kind of like not, not my main argument here to not draft Hopkins, but last year is what we saw him do at his absolute peak. There is no way that he reciprocates the same numbers that he had last year. And I think people are drafting him at where he, he was last year. So they'll have a, a fully healthy Will Fuller, um, at least as of right now, who missed six games, which obviously increased Hopkins' target share on the offense. They drafted Kiki, Kiki Kuti, Kiki Kuti, do you love me, who is sidelined with a hammy right now, but Bruce Ellington, who um, one of those two is going to play the slot, either Kiki Kuti, who a lot of people really like as a rookie, or Bruce Ellington, who Matt Harmon absolutely loves via his reception perception, is really excited to see him do damage. And he's played really, really well in the preseason, so I think they have a legit uh, slot receiver as well this year in Houston. Uh, they also drafted this tight end, Jordan Aikens, in the third round, who has reportedly done very, very, very well in camp so far. Um, he caught two touchdowns in their first preseason game, so he very well might be a red zone factor down there for Deshaun, for Deshaun Watson in this Houston offense. Those aren't my only concerns, though. While they are concerns, right, I do see just, just based on the norms, his target share is going to go down from 35%. He now has other weapons there that they didn't really have last year. The other concerns are with Watson, one overall, and with their defense. So we'll cover Watson first. He was absolutely dynamite last year. He was absolutely electric, too, way too electric. Um, he had a damn 9.3 touchdown rate, 9.3% touchdown rate. So 9.3% of his attempts went for touchdowns. He attempted 204 throws last year. 19 of them went for touchdowns, which is other otherworldly if, if you actually look at these numbers. Um, and I know a lot of people that are just kind of at the surface of fantasy analysis don't look at those numbers, but this is this is so far of an outlier that it's crazy. And if there's one number to take away from this entire video, it's Deshaun Watson's 9.3% touchdown rate. There's nowhere to go but down. The NFL uh, leader is usually around 7%. Um, and there are a few outlier years like Tom Brady, when he set the touchdown record, Peyton Manning, when, he, when, they, when them two went back and forth with setting the touchdown record, neither of them hit 9.3% of a touchdown rate, which should really trigger something in your head. Um, they barely sniffed 9%. I don't think either of them actually hit 9% in those seasons. So he's a player that, as much as I hate to say it, got lucky a lot of the time. He's just definitely a talented player. Like, he's looked good in this preseason, but in just seven games last year, he threw 13 interceptable passes per player profiler. So he got lucky on a lot of his throws that should have been picked off. And a lot of those drives that should have been picked off ended up being touchdowns for this offense and for Deshaun Watson and for DeAndre Hopkins. Um, and right now, he actually, per Vegas odds, Watson is the odds-on leader to lead the NFL in interceptions in 2018. Uh, his over-under is at 17 and a half. So last year, I think a lot of things broke right for Deshaun Watson, and we're going to see that kind of come down to the norm, especially from a, a passing percentage. Obviously, he always has that, that rushing upside, and he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback for sure, um, but his passing upside is going to come down a little bit, which is going to affect DeAndre Hopkins. When you look at Watson last year, his deep balls obviously connected a lot with DeAndre Hopkins. We were seeing a lot of Hail Marys being thrown and a lot of shootouts, which I'll get into in a second. He was someone who ranked 38th of 39 quarterbacks. Only Deshaun Kaiser ranked worse in terms of adjusted completion percentage per pro football focus. This is a bad offensive line. Um, and Deshaun Watson is someone who his numbers were really, really bad under pressure last year. So if they didn't improve the offensive line, then uh, he might still have troubles under center there. So, you know, 
I think the passing game is going to take a step back, which is to the detriment of DeAndre Hopkins as well, plus they're adding more weapons there. The last thing that makes me extremely nervous is the fact that they were in running gun mode a lot. Like I said, Watson was com consistently throwing deep balls and throwing Hail Marys, and they were in shootouts all the time, which obviously favors the passing game statistically. Um, and that happens because the defense, they're, the Houston's defense last year was literally the worst in the NFL. They gave up over 27 points per game to opposing offenses. And that will not be the case in 2018. They were killed with injuries last year, mainly to obviously their leader, J.J. Watt, and Whitney Merciless. Um, they'll have both of those guys back. They brought in former Jacksonville Jaguars slot cornerback Aaron Colvin, who was a key piece of that defense last year. They brought in Honey Badger, Tyrone Matthew. And, you know, they re-signed Jonathan Joseph. So just to reaffirm, like, they're getting their key players back from injury, which was a huge hit to them last year, as well as bringing in really good D-backs in Aaron Colvin and Turin Matthew. And what I'm saying is this is going to make their defense a lot better. Um, and we've seen under defensive-minded coach Bill O'Brien, right, the first three years that he was their coach from 2014 to 2016, they were a team that ranked top six in rushing attempts per game. Last year, obviously, that fell off because they had to pass the ball so much because they were always in shootouts or always trailing because their defense was letting up. And now their defense is going to be good again. And they have a very, very easy strength of schedule, according to Warren Sharp which means uh, that's going to be setting up the running game more than the passing game. They won't have to play in shootouts, and they won't have to chuck the ball up as much. So I think the volume goes down in the air. The volume goes up in the rushing game. So I think there's just a lot working against DeAndre Hopkins, and if you're drafting him based on how he did last year, I mean, he's still going to be a fine. Like, I would be completely happy with him as my wide receiver one. Um, but there are a lot of running backs, top-tier running backs, that I would easily take over him here, and it's Kamara, Barkley, Fournette, Melvin Gordon. Um, and like I said, DeAndre Hopkins is a guy I won't have on my teams because I will have to spend a first-round price on him, and I'm not really willing to do that. So if you still disagree on DeAndre Hopkins and you're taking him in the top eight, I want to drop a comment. I want you to drop a comment down below. One, telling me I'm a piece of shit. Two, telling me why after the argument I just laid out. Why do you think so? Um, but if you don't, then I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you you know, if you got respect for my argument right there, thumbs up the button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, and, you know, I, I just I would just very much appreciate that. So cheers to you, DeAndre Hopkins. Still a good player. Still a great guy, I'm sure. But not worth my first round pick. We're going to move on to a second wide receiver who's finally ADP has, has taken a step back. It was like in, in the 30s for, for the longest time, and now it's finally moving back. And that is Brandon Cooks of the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Rams, currently being picked around 45, 47, wide receiver 22. He has a new quarterback that he's working with in Los Angeles and Jared Goff, of course. He's in a new situation where there are a lot of mouths to feed between Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. Um, Todd Gurley, and if any of their tight ends ever actually end up stepping up between Gerald Everett and Tyler Higbee, I think Cooks is a very good player. I think any, everything he's done throughout his NFL career points you to say that he's a good player. Like, there's no doubting that. However, um, to think that his volume's going to be anywhere near it has been over the last previous years is super naive from a fantasy point of view. Now, Cooks will replace Sammy Watkins pretty much in an offense that spreads the ball around a ton. They ranked 24th in pass attempts per game last year. They're a good, good, good team. That's that's part of the reason why they ranked so low in pass attempts because they didn't need to pass the ball. They kept the ball on the ground. Their defense is good, but their defense is going to be even better this year, which means at most it's going to stay the same, right? Their pass attempts, the volume is still going to be pretty low because their defense added Ndamukin Su, Akib Tlaib, and all these other players um, on, on their defense, and they're going to be a very, very, very good defense. So there's no reason for them to pass the ball a Ton. What concerns me even more is that Watkins, right, who Cooks is kind of replacing as uh, maybe the X receiver or whatever, uh, Watkins, I think, was even more, you know, this is a personal view, but I think he was a better fit for this offense in the sense that they needed a, a red zone target. They needed a goal line target, and that's not what Cooks is, it's not what Cooks does, right? And that's such a big part of fantasy success, obviously, scoring touchdowns and being able to do that. Now, Watkins scored eight touchdowns on just 39 receptions last year. But he was a frequent target of Goff's um, throws on the goal line, right? There were so many plays where Watkins ran like a slant on the two-yard line and Goff connected with him. And Cooks is not going to get that those 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 targets that Watkins saw last year. So you saw Cooks had 43 more total targets on the year than Sammy Watkins did. Um, but he saw just two more red zone targets and just a single 10 zone target more than Watkins did, despite having 43 overall targets more than Watkins did. So I think that kind of tells you that these teams that have Cooks and these teams that want to play with Cooks don't see him as that kind of red zone threat. And, you know, it's not surprising giving his skill set, 5'10", 190 pounds, a speedster, a uh, guy who makes really quick breaks and things like that. I think Sammy Watkins is much better set up to succeed in that part of the field. Jared Goff clearly likes using his big-bodied 
um, guys down there, his big body receivers. And you could see from last year, the most hit, the most targeted red zone players for the Rams last year, Cooper Cup, 6'2", Todd Gurley, 6'1", Sammy Watkins, 6'1". Those are the three guys with the most targets in the red zone last year. Goff clearly likes to use those throws down at that part of the field to guys who are bigger, which is not Cooks' game, right? Cooks is also moving over to this offense where, you know, we have to ask ourselves, how often will they really utilize his best asset? And this is not a knock on McVay. Obviously, he knows exactly what he's doing and clearly is a better offensive mind than maybe than me. I don't know, man. I think I lay out some pretty big facts over here. You look at last year, right? Brady was and has always been amongst the NFL league leaders in terms of pass attempts, in terms of air yards, in terms of um, deep, deep throws and those kind of things. And that's where Cooks really shines on the field. Um, and Goff won't be that quarterback. And I look at Vegas. Vegas has Brandon Cooks' is over under at 799 receiving yards, 799 and a half, so like 800, and five and a half touchdowns. Now, obviously, everything isn't perfect in Vegas, but I mean, there's a reason that they stay in business because they're pretty damn good. Um, and that's the over under they set for Brandon Cooks. Are you going to be happy using a fourth or fifth round pick on Brandon Cooks and him getting you eight, 800 yards and five touchdowns? Maybe six touchdowns? Uh, I don't think so, but that's what Vegas projects him to be. Uh, Jared Goff is a guy who ranked like 20th in the league in air yards and 20th in deep pass attempts, and that's exactly where Tom Brady threw the ball a ton. So the skill set, I don't think, really matches this offense as well as it did for the Patriots offense. I think that's going to be a big hit on his overall production this year. The last thing I want to say is, like, you look at Cooks, and I think a lot of the reason that he's being drafted this high is because of the production he's had over the previous few years. I don't think I don't think that's a good predictive way to look at Cooks and his NFL career so far because two out of three years, I don't want to say they were fluky, but like the first year they had no one else to throw the ball to besides Cooks, so he got a ton of volume and a ton of targets. And last year they signed him or they traded for him prior to the Julian Edelman industry, uh, in, industry injury. So that tells me that like they had plans of using Cooks in the wide receiving group, but not as the clear-cut wide receiver one, right? Julian Edelman would have been very heavily involved and uh, I don't think the Patriots saw him as a clear wide receiver one. And that would have obviously diminished his production, which is something people are drafting him based on the last few years of production. But it shouldn't have been that high is basically what I'm saying. And I think it's more predictive of, you know, Bill, Uncle Bill over there, Bill Belichick, definitely didn't see Cooks as their wide receiver one. But it ended up being the case because of the injuries and things that happened there. So Cooks has finished as wide receiver 15 in fantasy on a points per game basis. You move him over to the Rams where the competition for targets is much higher, at least in terms of wide receivers. And the depth of the throws in terms of, you know, deep passes are the opposite of what he saw with Brady uh, now that Jared Goff is his quarterback. And not to mention, literally, he's going from Tom Brady to Jared Goff. That's a point in its own right. But just don't draft Brandon Cooks in the, in the fourth or fifth round, guys. Please fade him at his current ADP. I would be okay drafting him in, like, the sixth if he fell to the seventh round because I don't think his production is going to be much higher. His production, honestly, might be worse than Robert Woods or Cooper Cup. So there's no way I'm taking him all the way up there. And before we move on to numero trace, I want to thank today's sponsors for the video. That is Fantasy Yawks, FantasyJocks.com. They are the industry. Ooh, you should like that little skull. I brought this back from Mexico. I was like, at the time, I thought it was such a good purchase. I'm like, oh, this is such a good um, such a good decoration for the HQ. Let y'all know I'm Falcons fan, so because you guys always ask me that. But then I'm like, where, the f where am I going to put this shit? So now it's just like a placeholder. For the Fantasy Jocks belt, they are the number one industry leader in equipment for your league. I'm talking about belts, I'm talking about rings, I'm talking about trophies, live draft boards. They do it for football, for baseball, for basketball, whatever you need, whatever your league needs. FantasyJocks.com has it. They also have a promo code for you right now. Take 10 or Taco Corp, whichever one you prefer. 10% off your order, so have everyone throw in 5, 8, 7, 9, 12, 11, 10, 4, 6, 3, 1, 8. Fuck, I thought I honestly didn't duplicate any of the numbers until I said 8 again. I might have said 8 like four times, but... Have everyone chip in a little bit more than the, the regular buy-in, and you can get yourself a trophy, and they engrave the names on here. They also have their draft board kits. Guys, if your draft was in the next week or so, they can expedite their shipping for you and get you a draft board kit, which includes the live draft board with all the player stickers, and they have a bunch of other stuff that comes in the... Uh that comes in the set. I can't. Uh, they have koozies that, that are for your league ma mates, and you can write your team's name on them. They got this penalty flag, so if you're doing a live draft and you want to throw something at your friend's head while he's taking too damn long to make his pick, they got that. They have three different 
draft kits, which include different things, and they're based on like a pricing tier. One of them includes a belt. So I would highly recommend you go check out fantasyjocks.com, and I want to thank them again for sponsoring today's video. Number one source for all your fantasy football league gear. Go check them out. Links in the description. Let's move on to numero tres. And this is, uh, to me, I don't know. Dude, I've been saying this since the beginning of the summer, and I couldn't have, it couldn't have been an easier fade for me. And this is uh, Pierre Garçon of the San Francisco 49ers. He's still being picked semi-high. His current ADP is 81 right now, wide receiver 33. 33, that's like his fucking age right now. Now, so he just turned 32 years old. He just turned 32 years old. He's returning to this newly hyped offense. Everybody likes the new toys in the NFL, right? And we see that with Kyle Shanahan, we see that with Jimmy G. Thus, it raises people's ADP. So he's coming back 32 years old after this serious neck injury. Literally broke his neck last year at age 31. So now he's coming back in 2018. He missed the entire second half of the season last year. So when I when I do my player analysis, right, I like to look at both sides of the picture. I like to say, why do people still like Pierre Garçon? Like, what is their thinking behind still drafting him at wide receiver 33, right? He's like a wide receiver three in, in people's eyes still. And I'm like, okay, you know, let me try to understand why. And let me try to convey you off those points and be like, this is this is a horrible decision for what you're doing, right? So I, I hit on all those points and then I try to argue against it. Last year, people were very excited about Pierre Garcon entering the season, right? And I was one of them included. He, he was virtually the only passing option in the San Francisco passing game. So by default, his volume was going to be super high. He was also reuniting with Kyle Shanahan when he had his career year. He played as like the X receiver back in back in Washington. I think it was in like 2013 when he had over 180 targets. He led the NFL, 1,350 receiving yards. Somehow finished as wide receiver 13 with 180 targets, but that's none the more. We're not going to get into that. The thing to take away from that one is like that's easy to misspell considering that was literally five years ago, guys. People aren't that he was like 26, 27 playing in his prime. He's now 32. I'm not looking into that much because he's clearly not like the go-to receiver here in San Fran anymore. Last year prior to the injury, this is this is what I see. I see I literally see guys that I follow on Twitter that I respect their opinions, guys who are pretty high up in the fantasy community. And they're like, oh, Garcon is such a lock this year. I can't believe people keep fading him. He's a wide receiver too, like no doubt. And I'm like, are you guys fucking serious? Like this is the easiest fade I've ever seen in fantasy football. We look back at last year, right? And, and the big thing coming into the year was that he's automatically getting a ton of volume. And that's what we saw uh, for the first seven or eight games that he played in before getting hurt. He played in eight games. So in those eight games, he had 40 catches, 500 receiving yards. He had not scored a touchdown yet, however. As impressive as his target numbers were, 65 through eight games and his catch totals were, I want you to hear this. Through those eight games, when people were so excited about his volume, he was still wide receiver 40 in standard and wide receiver 29 in PPR leagues in terms of fantasy points per game at that time. So he was wide receiver 29 while seeing the volume we expected him to see while he was healthy without any other weapons in this passing game. And he was still wide receiver 29 in PPR leagues. Now we're drafting him at wide receiver 33, only four spots behind it. They have Marquise Goodwin, they have George Kittle. They have Jarek McKinnon, Dante Pettis, who I don't really think is going to be a thing this year. Marquise Goodwin broke out after Pierre Garçon's injury. They re-signed him to a 20, uh, an extension of over $20 million for his contract. All reports out of camp, as well as everything we've seen through preseason, is that Jimmy G and Marquise Goodwin's connection has been very real. And that's been the case so far through these preseason games. He's looking at Gar uh, Goodwin as wide receiver one. Goodwin is making explosive plays down the field, which is killing Pierre Garçon. And you can clearly see that Garçon is not like one of his go-to options. Like I said, they traded up in the second round to grab Dante Pettis. So, you know, this could be a special teams play as, long, as well as someone who's playing wide receiver three in this offense. Trent Taylor is coming on a little bit. I know he's a guy that people kind of like, but really the, the, the whole point of it is, is the only, the only reason you were buying Garçon last year was because he was guaranteed volume as the only weapon. Now they have like five new weapons um, that are automatically going to push Garcon's ceiling and floor further down. So I'm completely fading Garcon as wide receiver three here because you're paying almost the same price that you did last year despite so many more variables in the e equation. Um, and he's one of those guys who's kind of made his career based off his like his size and athleticism, right? He's someone who's got like a high spark score, high weight adjusted speed score. And as you get older, especially when you're in like 32 and you have these serious injuries, those start to dwindle a little bit. And if you're not someone who is like a route runner technician in, in a sense, right? If you're one of those bigger guys like he is, we see like the Andre Johnsons fall off and the Brandon Marshalls and the Des Bryants. Like if you are someone who falls off uh, at that age due to, you know, that's what you rely on, it, it's a pretty quick fall off. And I, I could totally see it happening with Garcon here. I think he's going to finish with around 50 catches, maybe 550 to 600 yards, three to four touchdowns. Ultimately, like a fantasy wide receiver five, maybe 
a low end four that you're paying a wide receiver three price for. And I think it's just going to be a wasted pick when we look back at it last year. So I am all out on Garcon. I'm out on DeAndre Hopkins as well as Brandon Cooks. Now, the honorable mention here is Tyreek Hill. And a lot of people will argue this following the preseason week two game. It's the same thing, guys. We, you should have already expected that. You knew that Hill's, go Hill's going to make plays like this throughout the year. This is going to happen. It just so happened that it happened in one of the preseason games. So that's going to shoot up his ADP. But you're still looking at a, a new quarterback who is one of Vegas' favorites to lead the league in interceptions. Um, their strength of schedule to start the year is really, really tough. They play at the Chargers, at the Steelers, against the 49ers, who are probably the only below average team they play in like the first eight games at Denver uh, versus the Jaguars. Then they travel to New England and Foxborough. They play the Bengals, who were very, very, very underrated as a pass defense. I think they were third in the league in yards per attempt, only behind Jacksonville and Minnesota. After the Bengals, they play the Broncos again. So that's a brutal, brutal, brutal slate of teams to start the year off with. And I just think that like Alex Smith was amazing through the air last year as a deep ball guy. He was sixth in deep ball attempts and first in deep ball accuracy. So for Patrick Mahomes to replicate that production, um, he's going to need to be very, 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 very good. And that's just to replicate the production. And now you add Sammy Watkins to the mix. So although we haven't seen the production from Sammy Watkins yet, I still think that Tari Kill is a fade at his current ADP of 32 overall wide receiver 13. I think he's going to be a little too volatile for me, but I know people will disagree just based on the one connection that them two had this preseason, but that's really it. Um, if you want to take a look at all of my busts, I have them in my draft guide, which is for sale right now on BigDogsFantasy.com. You can hit up the shop section and head right over to there and find it right there. There's also a link down below. It has my top busts, my top sleepers, my must draft players, my top 250 overall rankings, positional rankings by tiers, um, as well as like a ton of other different resources that you can use to help you with your fantasy draft. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop thing, but go check out the draft guide if you would like. Um, it's up for sale on the website. And that's really it. So make sure you drop a comment down below on who your top busts are. Uh, give that a thumbs up to the video if you enjoyed and appreciated the work that I put into this bad boy. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We will be doing uh, the running back series of this next week, probably next Wednesday. Uh, if you're on the podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. I very much appreciate that. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.